brothers and sisters, from the time of Adam's creation until the last hour, there will be no trial greater than Dajjal. This is what the Prophet ﷺ informed us. And the Sahaba reported that he used to teach them about Dajjal and include it in the du'as to be made at the end of our prayers when we say Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min a'adhaab jahannam wa min a'adhaab al-qabr wa min fitnat al-mahya wa al-mamat wa min sharr fitnat al-masih al-dajjal O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the punishment of hell, the torment of the grave, the trials of living and dying, and from the evil trials of the Antichrist, Al-Masih Al-Dajjal. And they said that he used to teach them this dua, the way he taught a surah from the Quran. That is the importance that he gave it. He gave it to them, made sure they learned it and used it. So this is something we should add to our regular prayers as a reminder to us of the potential danger which lies ahead. And the Prophet Sallallahu had told us that all the earlier prophets had warned of the coming of Dajjal. He said, Allah most great and glorious never sent a prophet without warning their nation about Dajjal. However, the messages which were given to the earlier prophets are now distorted. If we look in the scriptures of the Christians and the Jews, the information they have is not clear. It's metaphorical language, difficult to figure out what it's actually talking about. But because Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was the last messenger to humankind, he gave us the full detailed description of Ad Dajjal and also the detailed description of what would happen during the time that he conquers this earth with no details left out. So it is very important, especially in these times where we have many scholars or those who claim to be scholars Speaking about Dajjal in a metaphorical sense, I'm sure you've all heard at one time or another, Dajjal being referred to as the television, the big one eye looking at you. Or some people say it's the UK, England, which spread its tentacles over the world and enslaved huge swathes of humankind, it was the UK. And America is an extension of the UK. Or people have explanations with the internet. It's the internet. The internet is a great evil, it contains a lot of evil, and so on and so forth. However, when we listen to what the Prophet Sallallahu said, it becomes very clear about who Dajjal is. That he is none of these things that modern speakers, lecturers may say, but that he is an individual, a human being. As Allah put a trial from the world of the jinn, shaitan, leader of corruption from a spiritual perspective, 
spiritual world not visible to us, he also created a Dajjal from this physical world who would be a major trial for humankind. And the Prophet Sallallahu described him as blind in the right eye. That his right eye would move, twitch, as if unstable. His left eye would also be defective having a thick film over it like people who have cataracts etc where there's a film which develops over the eye and the color of it will be greenish a greenish tinge the prophet ﷺ had said at the jal ainuhu khadra kazujaj that the jal's eye that is the left eye which he would see with would be greenish like that of glass because copper was used in the making of glass in the past it gave the tinge a greenish tinge to glass that was made his complexion would be white white with a tinge of redness ruddy white meaning the white of people who are in the northern parts of Europe, Scandinavians and others. He will have a broad forehead. And where his hairline is, where his eyebrows are, is wide, not narrow. And his neck will be wide. He will not have a small neck but a wide neck and he will have a powerful build he will have long curly hair so much so that they look like small snakes coiled one on top of each other he will be sterile he will not known to have had any children and the Prophet Sallallahu had said, he most closely resembles Abdul Uzza ibn Qatan from the Mustalaq clan of the Khuza'a tribe who died in pre-Islamic times. So he's described as looking like a particular individual. So all these stories about television and countries and internet, etc., we know it's bunk. It's nonsense. The Prophet Sallallahu descriptions is of a human being. He does add that between his eyes will be written the word kafir. Said maktubun bayna aynay kafirun yaqra'uhu kullu mu'minin katibun aw ghayru katib. It would be visible to all the believers, whether they were literate or illiterate. What does that mean? If we write the word Allah, whether a person is literate or illiterate, Muslim, he will know this is the word Allah. In a similar way, the believers will know him. Disbeliever, Al-Masih, Al-Dajjal.